Hey, Uncle Doug. Ho. Uh, you know, it is a spooky time of year. Mm. Uh, it is a, it is a, it's a, there, there's fun for all, for everyone. Do you mean election season? I was yes, say. indeed. Yeah. It's, uh, that's less fun, but, uh, but it's still like tremendously spooky. Matter Trick fact, or cheat. May, I think that's called. This may be the spookiest of all of the, this yeah, season. It's, it's a spooky time of a spooky year, you know, in a spooky age on a yes, spooky indeed. ass planet. Yeah. Uh, but I think there are some problems uh, that we don't have to worry about quite as much as perhaps we worried about in the past. Uncle Mark, do you have anything? Yeah. yeah. Any good news on the horizon that we well, can talk about? Well, yeah, we'll get there. I, we, <clears throat> you know, as you guys were mentioning, it is, it is spooky season, as some people say, the heart of October. That's the word on the street, the talk around the water cooler, the buzz, <laughs> as they say. But quick before we get into it, honest question, what do you guys think about Halloween? I love I've never Halloween. loved it. Yeah. Uh, we have differing opinions. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to separate ourselves. <laughs> you, you've never liked it at all, Doug. Even no. f- from childhood. No. <clears throat> hmm. I never. What? I, I, free I, candy. The free candy was nice, but it's like you know, it wasn't like you know, as as kind of modest as my family was, it wasn't like I couldn't afford candy other times of year. Uh, um, and I don't love the you know costume thing was always just a big drag for me, and hmm. I'm a bummer. Bummer. What can I say? <laughs> but you like it, Dan. I've always, I, I've always enjoyed it. I, uh, I like uh, embracing the spooky, yeah, uh, in a fun way, and I like sort of the the transgressive sort of vibe yeah. of the whole thing. I think it's a lot of fun. I like, I like the sexy parties. I don't know. It all just feels uh, like good. Pl- it's when grown ups get to play. In a way that grown-ups don't often do. Mm, so, like, I think that that's actually a, a lot of it for me. See, I, I loved it as a kid um, because, you know, I was this imaginative kid and didn't have a tremendous amount of outlet for it, so it was always a big deal for me. What but happened then, to the imagination? I don't know. <laughs> it's just left. I sold it oh, for okay. some magic beans. But, it died um, with the kid. But uh, it died with the boy. Um <laughs> But then I kind of went into the Doug sensibility of it where like in college, I just thought it was every straight guy, you know, that was the night he put on his girlfriend's clothes and got hammered and just screamed right. <laughs> all night. And I'm like, oh, fuck this shit. And then, but I, as an adult, I've kind of come full circle. I, years ago, I was working in Atlanta and I went to my buddy's place and autumn in Atlanta is gorgeous. Like it's so beautiful. And, and the guy, this guy I was working on a movie with, <clears throat> was the scenic painter, so he was really capable of all this cool shit. And he had this amazing, spooky old Victorian house on a corner in this great neighborhood in Atlanta. And he, he went for it, right? Like, the he and his family just, it was nuts. Like, oh, the I whole yard was a cemetery. There was fog everywhere. You had, And the kids, he only let them in a few at a time to walk around the wraparound porch where oh, his fun. wife was the witch at the end, right? It was all outside and... and but it was really spooky, spooky fun, and the kids were just lined up. Like, it t- took an hour. You'd have to wait in line for an hour. And I just saw how much fucking fun they were having. Yeah. And I kind of came around, and I said, you know what? This is this is actually a really cool thing. And so I, I've come full circle. And as a person who works in the imagina- imagination business, I think more imagination and creative playtime for kids is better than less. And yeah. letting children inhabit a character for a whole day is not just fun and creatively challenging, but in a way it's kind of empathy building. <clears throat> and, mm. you know, for you, as you're saying, Dan, kind of the, the transgressive nature of it for, for queer and non-gender gender conforming kids who are too young to have the words to say it or maybe aren't safe or, uh, to honestly express themselves in their family situation it may be a single night of liberation after, you know, another year of living in some kind of closet. So, well, let me, before you go on, I'll just, I'll amend my, my, my harumphing a little bit. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate Halloween for other people. I don't want it to go away or anything like that. Mm. And I love trick or treaters. And in the past few years, we've had a little tradition where you guys come up to my house and we watch a scary movie on Halloween and we get candy and hunt, but the, we've only ever gotten like two or three trick or treaters a night. Well, and then one year we were watching the movie, and we heard trick or treat, and Dan's wife screamed so loud with excitement. I think she scared them off. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> 
<laughs> she was so excited we had trick or treaters. It sounded like someone was getting killed in the house. <laughs> that can happen. And they that ran away. Happen. So, but I, I love you. I, I I'm with you 100 percent on I. You know, kids getting dressed up and going out for a fun night. I I get behind that 100. percent I never loved it. Yeah. Because I am, like I said, a bit of a bummer. Yeah. See, I'm the opposite of you guys. I think the kid part is the worst part about it, and I just want them to go away so that I can have my fun. Wow, we're like all over the map with Halloween. Okay, that's cool. That's, I love it. So, But honestly, you know, I don't give a shit that it derives from a quasi-religious pagan festival that it has precious little to do with anymore at all, right? Right. It can be magical and spooky and scary in a great way, and, and what child couldn't use a little more magic in their lives? So I'm for it by gum. And that's why it's so fucking sad <clears throat> that the American habit of panic and overreaction has for so long robbed this intoxicating night of unusual permission and childhood abandon of some of its magic and transportive, transportive power. Uh, want a window into the, quote, common wisdom that Amer American panic and overreaction to just about anything looks like around Halloween? Let me, let me quote from a piece in the October 31st, 1983 Gainesville Sun newspaper, <clears throat> from a column by Abigail Van Buren, better known as advice columnist Dear Abby. Dear Abby, that's right. Yeah, who is considered a paragon of American wisdom and sensibility for reasons that will make absolutely no sense when I'm done reading this. <laughs> and didn't make sense before you started reading nah, it either. It really, she made no sense at all. So she says, Dear reader, it's Halloween again and time to remind you that <laughs> somebody's child will be seriously injured or killed in a Halloween-related traffic accident. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's child will be badly maimed or fatally burned due to a flammable costume. Oh, my God. <laughs> Somebody's child will become violently ill or die after eating poisoned Halloween apple <laughs> candy or an apple with a razor blade. Uh, somebody's child will be coaxed into an automobile and lured into a secured area, secured area, secu uh, sorry, secluded area and sexually assaulted. Oh, my God. Holy oh shit. My God. To to make this sure that your ch that child isn't yours, here are some tips to ensure the safety of your children. <laughs> oh, my God. Uncle Doug, you are suddenly so much more Pollyanna about this thing than I thought. Prescient, really, right? Um, use flame-proof cost costumes only, like someone needs to tell you that. Uh, <laughs> because masks, floppy hats, wigs, and veils often interfere with t a child's vision, use makeup instead. Accessories such as swords, broomsticks, hatchets, wands, etc. should be made of cardboard rather than plastic, metal, or wood. Here's Sharp a little hatchet, Timmy. Now go have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Provide youngsters with flashlights to prevent falls on sidewalks and porch steps. Positively, no lighted candles should be carried. Um, so there goes your Dickens Halloween costume, I guess. <laughs> Decorate your child's costume or, and trick-or-treat bag with reflective tape to make them highly visible to motorists. Remind your child they should never enter the home of a stranger or accept rides. Adults can help by keeping their yards well lighted. Parents should check all treats before allowing children to eat them. <clears throat> Very young children should never be out after dark unless accompanied by an adult. So make it a safe Halloween and come Thanksgiving, you'll have more to be thankful for. <laughs> My God. Okay. See, yeah, Uncle Doug suddenly doesn't seem like a curmudgeon at all. I know, right. Doug, Doug is on the right side of this history. So uh, so if I let my kid go trick-or-treating, they're either going to be flattened by a car, accidentally incinerated, fatally po uh, poisoned, abducted by pedophiles, or impale themselves, or any of a number of combinations of all of the above. Dear Abby thinks Halloween is a single night version of the Hunger Games, apparently. So right. have fun, kids. But if you get stab, rape, incinerated, which is hugely likely, you'll ruin Thanksgiving for everyone. <laughs> Bye. So that's a hot mess of classic American panic. Yeah. yeah. But there's one tidbit in there I want to shine a non-candle light on uh, more safely and closely. <clears throat> and that is the poisoned candy one. Yeah. This is an odious urban legend that has turned uh, a wildly fun night for children into a panic-inducing ordeal for parents, causing totally useless fugues of paranoia and hysteria since I was a lad. Countless Halloweens have been fogged by reports of diabolical strangers tainting candy with drugs, rat poison, razor blades and needles to murder or maim the children of strangers for uh, reasons, apparently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> <clears throat> now... There are some fucked up people in the world, and there are real actual murderers who kill total strangers, even children, sure, and that's not good. Um, but it's pretty it's, deranged to assume it's that someone... a hard stance to take. Yeah, it's just not and, again, I think, I think uh, the three of us are going to disagree on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
<clears throat> but it's pretty it's pretty deranged to assume that someone up the street from you would buy bags of Halloween candy, carefully open the wrappers, poison it or stick in a needle in it, then carefully wrap it back up uh, to appear untampered with, carve up some pumpkins, turn on the porch light, and cheerfully murder every random child for the crime of yelling trick or treat. An insidious plot that would be easily traceable back to your front door exactly. within hours. Yes. Yeah. Speaks to something deeply fucked up in the American imagination. <clears throat> it is the most imperfect crime. <laughs> yeah, you, you're going to fry for it, right? They're going to kill you. They're going to so. get you. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but like the rhythm, they're going to get you. <laughs> um, but like most hysterias of this nature, there are a few teensy tiny, tiny nuggets of reality that pro- provide the seeds for the mighty oak of American hysteria to grow out of. So in 1959, for reasons that are not clear, a guy in California gave chocolate-covered laxatives to trick-or-treaters, many of whom ended up having a pretty shitty night, but no, that's actually no one pretty funny. <clears throat> uh, he was still he was charged for the unlawful dispensing of drugs and a crime called an outrage against children. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> in 1964, a mean old woman who had some serious opinions about how, how old trick-or-treaters ought to be handed out packages of steel wool, dog biscuits, and very clearly marked ant poison oh. to older kids whom she told they were gag treats in order to scold them for participating in the holiday. That blew up into a huge news story about poison candy and dead children, but no one died or was even hurt by her crabby little stunt. <clears throat> even so, she was charged with endangering children. Yeah, it's that's not a cool thing to do. <clears throat> no, it's a shitty thing to do. Um, like, don't just don't participate in Halloween. Like, just yeah, turn close your, your porch door light and turn off. And, yeah. yeah. Um, but he, here are the two stories that really blew the the poison candy panic up. In 1970, a five-year-old boy in Detroit named Kevin Toston was reported to have died after eating some of his trick-or-treat hall. An investigation uh, was immediately launched and com- community panic ensued. Everybody, everybody's hair was on fire. His family provided the police with several weirdly tampered with pieces of candy that were tainted with heroin. Hmm. Um, their story fell apart pretty quickly, though, as they soon admitted to the fact that the boy had found his uncle's heroin stash mistook it for candy and consumed a massive fatal dose. Oh, oh, shit. Uh, and the frantic family was trying to cover for the uncle when they tried to fake the evidence of more tainted candy. Shitty, right. awful, a dead kid, but no case of strangers handing out poison candy to random children. Moral of the story, <clears throat> never trust an uncle. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But Uncles. also, like, uh, people don't just give away their heroin. That's yeah. not... That's, you can kind of count on heroin users exactly. to keep that. If heroin yeah. users are known for one thing, it's not giving away heroin. Yeah, it, a peanut butter cup is cheaper than a fix, so you're not getting their heroin. So, <clears throat> um, The other story is even more awful. In 1974, an eight-year-old boy in Texas named Timothy O'Brien ended up dying after apparently consuming a poisoned pixie stick. Uh, once again, the full force of the police was brought to bear. <clears throat> Community panic led to a national panic. It was all over the news. You can imagine. I remember. What, what, what year was that? 74. <clears throat> I don't I, think you I, remember it, 74. No. I don't, but I do remember <laughs> like there was a, I'm sure we'll get there, but a marked fear of pixie sticks when I was a kid. Well, this might have been the, the yeah. source of that. So um, events surrounding the night of the poisoning began to seem very peculiar, however. Uh, while out with several neighborhood kids and other parents, Timothy's father, Ronald O'Brien, dashed ahead to a house that did not appear to be participating in the holiday. Then he came back down off the porch with a handful of pixie sticks. The other parents thought it was odd that he had trick-or-treated without the kids, like an adult just knocking on the door by himself. <laughs> and they hadn't seen the door of the house open, but he said they had just opened it a crack and handed them, uh, handed them out to him. The police then discovered that Ronald had recently taken out life insurance policies on both of his children. Oh, my God. No way. (laughs) Even increasing them the day before Halloween, much to the discomfort of the very weirded out insurance agent who was like, yeah, people don't normally do this, you know. Yeah. (laughs) This is is not a... This is what's called a red flag in the (laughs) industry. (laughs) It was also discovered that the pixie sticks he gave the other children had been opened and closed back up with a staple. A staple? (laughs) Yeah. Not exactly wow. how pixie stick is typically how they come out of the package, right? <laughs> so it turns out Ronald O'Brien was distressed about being in debt and decided that collecting the life insurance policies he'd taken out on his own preteen children was his ticket to financial freedom. Oh my 
He even called the insurance company the very next morning to try and collect after his son died. Wow. He hoped the other kids uh, he gave the poison to would also die in order to cover his tracks. So that's fucked up. Oh my god! For those of you who don't know what a pixie stick is, we it, it's just it's like a paper straw with basically just granulated sugar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of poison already. It's yeah, yeah it is li- literally cocaine for kids. Yeah, but much slower acting than the cyanide that he put. In. And the amount of cyanide he put in these would kill like four adults. <clears throat> that is but incredible. also, I, I I should mention I. Uh, even though it is cocaine for kids, don't snort it. I know from experience that is not pleasant. <laughs> exactly. Got, there's something called a uh, caramel nose that is <laughs> not often seen in emergency rooms. So all the doctors are going to come check it out when the case shows up. It's like a big deal. It's a big deal. They look forward to it on Halloween. So so the, prick, the press nicknamed uh, O'Brien the Candy Man after the hit song Sammy Davis Jr. recorded in 1972 <clears throat> after it was featured in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory in 1971. Oh So that adds a sweet twist to this nightmare saga. Uh, The jury in his case took all of 46 minutes to convict him with one count of murder and four of attempted murder. For his crimes, the state of Texas executed the Candyman in 1984. A terrible, horrible, no good story. But again, not strangers trying to poison random children. Remember, if you get raped, abducted, assaulted, or murdered in the United States, statistics overwhelmingly show it was by someone you know. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, And it was not helpful to the explosion of this sinister canard that it was happening concurrently, uh, concurrently with and likely because of the satanic panic. Another American hysteria happening at the same time, which we discussed in episode 23. So stories of candy poisoning could trace the motivation of the perpetrator, and I'm saying quote perpetrators, to fables of widespread child sacrifice and ritual abuse that were apparently raging in every community from coast to coast. Uh, the very Christian and very demented illustrator Jack Chick, who will, we need to talk about another time, yes. um, added fuel to the fire by making one of his famous Chick tracks <clears throat> depicting a black mass where witches were asking Satan to bless their poisons, their needles, razor blades, and candies so they might deliver him the maximum number of child sacrifices on his special day. Ugh. And a stupidly credulous, as both local and national news media were about everything related to the satanic panic, it just became common wisdom, accepted yeah. fact that your children were very likely the target of a sadistic child murderer living somewhere within a few blocks of your house. By, by 1985, 60% of Americans were terrified of letting their children eat their well-earned sugary booty. Uh, a guy named Joel but, Best. But, but I must say, for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. They, yeah. they should have been concerned. <laughs> yeah. For other reasons. Uh, well, you know, kind of uh, diabetes is as American as apple pie, right? So, um, so Joel Best, a professor of sociology and criminal justice at the University of Delaware, is the world's leading expert on Halloween candy poisoning and tampering legends. Oh, no. It's, it's actually his life's work, um, this particular thing. So he's, he spent years tracking down every single report of poisoned goodies. And other than the sad circumstances I've mentioned above... There's absolutely no truth to any of the hundreds of panics, urban myths, and credulous local news stories. Wow. Yet to this day, news outlets warn of the dangers of poison candy and razor blades and apples. Uh, And by the way, if you're handing out apples on Halloween, even without razor blades, you're a monster (laughs) and to be avoided. Stop doing that. No apples. Texas should give you the chair for that. So Boo, trying to keep kids healthy. Boo. (laughs) You can have an apple any other fucking day. (laughs) Yeah. Um, some hospitals and clinics will still x-ray your candy to check for needles and shit. I know. It's amazing. Yeah. Churches and other groups have long organized uh, what's called trunk or treat events. Yeah. Where where basically all the same people whose porches you would have visited park in the church parking lot for the added safety feature of having candy distributed from the trunks of idling cars. (laughs) So that's much more fun, you guys. It sets a good precedent for the child, too. They learn that Getting stuff yeah. <laughs> that out of the trunk of a car is is a safe and healthy way of doing things. And so, spare a thought for the for the murderer pedophile down the road, like looking down the street at the parking lot, going, "Ah, if they I'm foiled wrong, me, they foiled me." Yeah, with his bowl full of needles back at home. <laughs> um, and look, given the political nightmare we're currently going through in this country, I'm as suspicious of about forty percent of my neighbors as the next guy. <laughs> but 
Halloween is also a lot of fun as a community event. The people with their porch lights on love to see the kids in their costumes and help contribute to the wonder and mischief and magic of a special childhood event. They bought candy to give it to your children for free, not to murder them with it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Have a tiny bit more fucking faith in humanity, which is weird for me to say. But obviously, despite Dear Abby thinking she needs to remind us not to let our children set themselves on fire, most parents do everything they can to make Halloween safe and fun for their kids. Uh, though this year, obviously, is going to be a weird one for sure. And, yeah. and you know, sure, take a look in the bag if you're nervous. But taking candy to get x-rayed going to the, quote, safe trunk or treats is giving into a lie about events that never happened. Just another hysterical moral, moral panic that has seized our weird American neck hairs from the Salem witch trials to the Muslim ban. Mm-hmm. There's plenty to be scared about in the world right now, like the very air we breathe is filled with murder germs. A paleo-fascist Supreme Court nominee is looking ready to legislate us back to pre-Deuteronomy. And a steroid-fueled Trump doing the tongue-out Epstein dance at his rally that I cannot unsee. (laughs) So be afraid of that shit, but not the candy for fuck's sake. So Yeah, I am 100% on record as being so thoroughly against the trunk or treat thing. Not just because, you know, it's... It ruins the 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 fun of like the, the sort of scavenger hunt nature of the yeah. th- of trick or treating, but also because like you as a kid, you finally have motivation to actually interact with people <clears throat> I completely that aren't in your you. church yeah. that aren't in you know you don't know who they are and you go to their house and they give you something nice and it's like uh, there's something beautiful ab- about the house to house thing it's I a community thing it's like a com- it's like a beautiful kind of building community in this one kind of funky little way and i think it's cool and i think yeah. the trunk or treat i i completely agree with you uncle danik i think the trunk or treat is actually quite racist because it it's not you know you're not call, you're like going to all of your neighbors and saying let's all go do this thing you're going to your community like your your church group um, it, one of the, my, the you know of the Halloween I hated. One of the favorite things was that you'd get candy from like Latino families. That was something you'd never seen before. Yeah, you know, it was like a different kind of candy. It was really cool. And yeah. you would you'd get. And there's to always go, the woman who gives you like the full size candy bar, and you're like, I'm never fucking forgetting her. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But it's those like, I will people, cry at her know, funeral. If you're, you're if you're not part of that church group or whatever group it is, you're not going to the trunk or treat. Right. So you're not exposing your kids to to the people who live around them. I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. So and but it's I all and re- again all that is based on bullshit. It's but based I remember, on lie. Uncle Mark, when we were kids and all of us, that was a constant refrain around Halloween. Yeah. Don't oh, eat yeah. your candy till you get home. You know. Uh, I remember that very clearly. And, Bre- and break all the candy bars in half before you eat them. Yep. And yeah. it's still a thing. That's so yeah. crazy. Yep. So there it is. Get out there, get some candy. And, uh, you know, if you're going to poison somebody, do it another night of the year. Don't be a dick about it. Well, Well, and also, also, you know, follow in the tradition and poison someone you love. That's right. Well, exactly. (laughs) And And, and again, about the trunk or treats, if, if U.S. crime statistics tell us anything, it it's don't trust people in your church. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So you're better off with strangers. Go get well, some candy. Well, remember, though, this year, you, I mean, A, you should be concerned that your child is eating a pillowcase full of candy in one night. That's a bad. Boo. But Boo also, you. you know, during the pandemic, every candy that you get from a stranger is poisoned. Yeah. So, you know, maybe not this year, I guess. Sorry, oh, kids. You're back to curmudgeonly. I don't, I, I, I don't like curmudgeon, Doug. I never left. Do you know what we're going to do? We're going to put a sign on the door that says, say trick or treat, step back 10 feet. And I'll put a little piece, uh, piece of tape on the sidewalk in front of our house, and we'll toss your treat to you. <laughs> Say trick or treat, step back 10 feet, give me something good to eat. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We'll all be safe. All righty. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye.